The roots of folk art go far beyond the boundaries of our integrated culture. Back in Europe, folk art was a marker of the peasant class, a group of people less sophisticated than the mainstream population. That's never been true in America. Although folk art was originally practiced in rural communities, it has now become a part of our national consciousness. It reminds us of the values that we hold dear. It gives us a sense of nationalism, even though the inspiration for this art form comes from many different countries. Folk art, it seems to me, uh, relates to the heart and soul uh, of a people. It has to do with, with family and home, with tradition, uh, but it also has to do with the individual um, ingenuity of an artist. It has to do with the creativity of an individual. We can talk about folk art as, as responding uh, to a kind of group aesthetic, as coming out of a tradition, uh, out of an ethnic group, out of a people. But in the end, it's the individual hand and intention of the artist, it seems to me, that uh, th that's most important. The intent of folk art has always been autobiographical. Changing very slowly over time, folk art has kept in touch with the soul of America. Recently, it has become a source of a greater truth in a society struggling to comprehend the changes of daily life. Americans have discovered some essential truth in these folk arts, which they do not find in the more official arts. They're more informal. They, they tell a great deal more about the daily lives of people. So in, in a search for the American identity, these objects have become just essential to our understanding of who we are as an American people, uh, what values we have, what, what, uh, what we stand for. My theory is this, is that folk art only becomes folk art after the fact. That within this Pennsylvania German community that existed in its kind of vacuum, if you will, from 1683 to, say, 1945, that folk art was working art. That was art that was working within the community. And, and it, 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 again, it's that reflection of, if we have something simple, let's embellish it. So what I'm suggesting is that what we are calling folk art today is truly folk art in the sense that the folks used it and they used it as an everyday application of this art form. They weren't sitting down saying, gee, this is folk art, I think I'll paint that, okay? They were sitting down and saying, gee, this spoon is beautiful, but if I carve the handle a little bit, it'll be prettier, and I'll be, aesthetically I'll enjoy that. They were doing it not for an appreciation by an outside audience, they were doing it for themselves. Because these artists were creating for their own satisfaction, they were much less concerned with the changes going on in the contemporary art world. To the contrary, folk art has now been embraced by contemporary culture. There's a very interesting synergy that exists between the art market and, and, and the art world or, 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 the, uh, or, or connoisseurship or, or the existence of a certain kind of art form. In a way, these these two elements kind of reinforce one another and, and validate one another so that, you know, on the, on the most simple and kind of, uh, you know, commercial level, if you have material that's going through a sale at auction, particularly because it's such a public way of dispersing of art objects, and that material makes headline prices, world record prices, you know, it kind of communicates in a very direct and unequivocal way that this is important material. And that kind of reinforces people's regard, respect, and to a certain extent interest in this. And so there's more scholarship that's done and there's more interesting material that comes up to the surface which then some of it gets sold at auction and hopefully it sells as well or better than the last time out and so that kind of cycle keeps going and, and there's that, as I said, there's this kind of synergistic kind of revalidation and confirmation process that goes on. <laughs> Oh, Freude, how it's weak, wet. Oh, where you 
ich doch schon droben, mein Heil und wär ich da, wo dich der Scharen loben und singt Halleluja. Folk art is finding a new level of acceptance in major museums because it helps us recall the integrity of the handmade object. As America embraced the machine age, interest in the simplicity of anything handmade declined. Regional and local traditions fell by the wayside as machine-made objects caught the nation's fancy. <laughs> Today, in a postmodern world, a world which seems to be searching for roots and meaning, folk art helps us go back to what seemed to be a simpler time. It takes us back to a time when things were made to last, a time when men and women had the ability to create things with their own hands, a time when we were more connected to the natural world. <laughs> As our world continues to change at a rate beyond our ability to comprehend, folk art serves to anchor our souls. Oh,